Tom, as we've been discussing uh, stories to enjoy, you've got a fourth story called Sun. Can you read that to us? Yes, Sun is an interesting story because it's something that deals with the subject of compassion in an unusual way. And the best way I can convey this to you is if I read the story. Go it'll ahead. Only, it'll take only a few minutes and I think it'll be worth your time. Bernie McDermott hobbled along the side of the highway hoping to get to Johnny's Bar and Grill before sundown. Once he got there, he would call his son to pick him up. The Tennessee afternoon sun was hot and he stopped a moment to roll up his sleeves. Wiping the sweat from his face with a handkerchief, Bernie argued with himself as to whether he should thumb a ride. After all, it would be another two miles. No, he'd have to walk. He wouldn't trust any stranger to pick him up. Strangers had been really friendly to him, and if they uh, became hostile, and it became hostile as he got older. Well, like that time he sat at Johnny's, smiting his own business, muttering in frustration as he attempted to coat his hamburger with a layer of ketchup. His hand shook as he pounded on the bottom of the bottle, and a man sitting at another table laughed. Hey, old man, the stranger said, why don't you just die so I don't have to come here and look at your ugly face anymore? Bernie only smiled back. He wasn't going to give that stranger the satisfaction that he had hurt him at the core. Yeah, Bernie thought. At 75, he was an old man, but that didn't make him a bad person, like his son thought he was. True, he deserted his family back in Kansas almost 40 years ago but it was only because booze got the better of him. But after his wife Maxine divorced him, he sobered up and went to AA. His son, when he turned 18, moved to Knoxville. Later, Bernie moved there too, renting an apartment only a few blocks away. Maxine, he groaned, why did you have to die before I could prove that I still love you? Now it was just him and his 50-year-old son who rejected any attempt at reconciliation. Well, today, Bernie would call him anyway and beg him for a ride home. But like before, they probably wouldn't exchange words beyond the idle chatter about the weather or politics or local news in Knoxville. It didn't matter. Bernie couldn't blame him for his lack of forgiveness after all those wasted years with booze. Spotting what he thought was a wallet lying on a highway, Bernie went to retrieve it. He heard the blare of an automobile horn and a screeching of tires. Then he felt an immense pain before he blacked out. Bernie felt as if he were clawing his way out of a nightmare. He gazed at the hospital ceiling but as he tried to move, his body screamed in pain. I'll ask you this again, the doctor said to him. What is your name? My name? I, I don't know what my name is. His voice was hollow, as if he were talking in a tunnel. What am I doing here? You're critically injured after a car struck you. The driver claims you ran toward the middle of the road. She didn't have time to stop. We checked your personal belongings, and you don't have any identification. Please, try to think of your name. I am trying, but I still don't know it. Please go away. I gave you a sedative. Maybe when you wake up, you'll be able to recall who you are. The nurses stopped talking when they saw a tall man with soft pepper hair in his early 50s enter a room where an elderly male patient went lay dying. Is that the driver of the car that hit that poor man, one of them asked? Oh, no, said the other nurse. The person who struck him was a 63-year-old woman. Poor guy. The old man was having has amnesia. He's dying and doesn't even know his name. We label his chart as John Doe for the time being. I'll go to his room and see if there's anything he needs. When the nurse entered the room, she saw the stranger kneeling by John Doe. He took out his rosary and started to pray as the old man stared at him. The nurse decided that this was not the right time to interrupt the stranger. She noticed his tears in his eyes as he got up and kissed the old man on his forehead. Th thank you, son, John Doe said. I really do appreciate you coming to visit me. The nurse took in a deep breath. This was the unknown patient's son? Certainly he could tell us the, the patient's name. She was about to ask the question, but John Doe interrupted her. I'm so glad you came, son. He smiled a little. Do you remember the time when you were a little boy and I took you fishing at the river? Remember how excited you were when you caught your first fish? You were a good father, the other man said. You always liked it when I read you a story about heroes like Paul Revere, Abraham Lincoln, and George Washington. Those will always be good stories. He put the rosy back in his pocket. You probably are in a lot of pain right now. Uh, that's right, but it don't matter. It's, it's, it's good to see you. And it's good to see you too. You'll have to excuse me. My, my mind is in a fog. I still don't know who I am. But I remember a few things. Like the time you were in the sixth grade and had a crush on your teacher. You remember that, son? No. 
but I'm happy you remember it. He walked toward the door. Maybe you ought to get your rest now. Wait, son, don't go yet. I beg you to stay with me a little longer. His face contorted in sorrow. The stranger turned toward the old man. Sure, I'll do that. Of course you should, the nurse interjected. After all, he's your father. The stranger smiled back at her and asked her to join him outside. But before leaving the room, he took another look at the old man. I'll be right back. I just have to tell the nurse something. As soon as they were alone in the hall, the nurse asked him for the patient's name. I can't tell you that. Why not? I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. I, I felt he needed someone. I heard that he was here and I wanted to give him some comfort. He felt good about seeing you. I mean, a son should always visit his dying father. You don't understand, he said, almost as in a whisper. We're all sons and daughters of God. So you're not... No, I'm Father O'Brien from St. Ignatius down the road. But does that really matter? If he believes I'm his son, why should I tell him otherwise? Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to return to his room. I think he might have more things to share with me.